even for me now in business, I'm always curious right. of like, how? Mm -hmm. My curiosity to you is, when you use slang, I'm not about to be one of these guys that is going to cap and say, I understand drug dealing lingo. Right. You know, you a lot of what people understand from you got that za or right. 36 O's or grams or like, let me get a gram. All this is talk that we hear in rap music. Right. So let's stop. Like it wasn't ever a time where somebody <laughs> was like, yo, bro, let me show you how to cook crack. Let me show you how to, you know what I'm saying, talk to the plug. You right. know what I'm saying? All this is right there in your face right. in music. But you've actually done this right. at a high level. Right. Who gave you the introduction to this world of drug dealing? It was a dude by the name of um, Big Man. He used to go with my sister. He got two kids by my sister Olivia and Octavius. And um, he used to trap on the corner of James P. Broadley in North Avenue. And, um, you know, I used to ride my bike. You know, I was around 12 or 13 years old at the time. And I used to ride my bike. It was around the time Tashiba had got killed in the bluff on the corner. And um, I just was like, shit, enough is enough. Like, I got to see, because I see him, I'm standing on the corner with him while he sell his dope. You know what I'm saying? So I was like, shit, I was curious. I was like, shit, let me see how much I can, because he paid $50 for a $50 slab. So I was like, shit, I got an uncle. His name was, his name Ironhead. And I called him up. I said, I need me a hundred dollar slab. He gave me two fifty dollar slabs. I cut it up. I really didn't make no profit because I really didn't know it was a it was it's a technique to cutting up crack. You smell me like, and it's a certain kind of razors you wanna use, which is treat razors. It's a certain kind of, you know, baggies you wanna use, which is 12, 12, 8. So, you know, I didn't even know none of this at the time because different sizes of bags would determine, you know, how much profit you make. I fucked around about the biggest bags, and now I'm giving away. I'm wondering why all the customers keep coming to me and nobody ain't making no money, but I ain't really making no money either because I ain't profiting. So it was a lady named by, by the name of Muffin. She told me like, look, 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 Terrell, you got to cut it up in a certain way. And that's when I started learning how to make profits from it. So, you know, Big Man probably introduced me to, you know what I'm saying, the block, you know, a block that I was from, of course. And, you know, I had not never just distributed drugs. I always watched my parents and my siblings and, you know, all the people around me deal with it. But he actually, my first time ever selling one stack of crack was, I was, with, with, was with him. So as you're talking, right. You said mother involved, right. father involved, right. whole family just entrenched with this type of lifestyle or right. environment. Now, for the viewer, you may see that as dysfunction, or you may see this as <laughs> whatever, right? I'm looking at this like this is no different than I'm seeing. I was just watching a documentary on Netflix called Mr. McMahon. Right. Right? His son seen his dad promote. His daughter, Vince McMahon, his daughter was mm -hmm. also impacted by promoting. Right. So no matter as what you're doing, people are going to be driven to so do that. that if this is something that makes money. Right. So your situation is no different than anybody else. The commodity is different. Right. The impact is also different. Right. But it's still business. Right. You feel me? Family business. So I'm like, I'm in this situation where it's like, bro, I'm extremely intrigued of like, okay, what if your mom, your dad, uncles, big uh, or fat or whoever you describe had businesses that they say? You know, I get that a lot from, um, my fiance cousin Poo Poo, she tell me all the time. Well, she used to tell me all the time because, you know, I ain't really have time to be in the studio. I ain't really have time to be doing shows and doing videos. I really had a very small window to even do this type of stuff. So, like, she used to always tell me, like, you know, if you put that same energy in some businesses, I think that you'll have a massive company. You smell me? 
But, you know, I ain't know that type of shit. You smell me? So, you know, going to prison and studying books and, you know, asking questions with real estate people and stuff like that, that's when I started learning about real estate. But at first, you know, I was in the same position. Like, damn, like, I ain't know anything outside of the trap. You smell me? Yeah. So. So this is a real quote from Elon Musk. Right. We all know him as right. Tesla's creator or whatever, SpaceX, amongst other different business prowess that he has been successful in. He said the greatest entrepreneurs in America's history has been drug dealers. Right. Pablo Escobar is the greatest businessman of all time. Right. So instead of him trafficking narcotics and having it a stress level of saying, I have to watch out because I can die. Right. Bill Gates mm -hmm. is just saying, okay, that's a bad investment and I lose <laughs> millions of billions. <laughs> one is fighting for his life. The other one is fighting for just money. You right. dig what I'm saying? So one needs this. You right. see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So if I'm going to learn about business, I'm going to take this opportunity to learn from any and everything. Mm -hmm. Call it crazy, call me corrupt, call me delusional, but I'm like, yo, my nigga, like, yo, yo cousin is correct. Because mm -hmm. that same type of brain power, you started seeing profit and loss, mm -hmm. understanding portion control, mm -hmm. understanding, okay, bro, if I'm selling a soda to you at 12 cents or 25 cents, but I'm getting that soda for 26 cents, that ain't really no profit. Right. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And even if I can open up the cup and, and control the poorer scale, I'm giving you 10 cents on that <laughs> damn cup. I'm but I'm charging you, Mason. Mm -hmm. So the commodity is completely different. All right. It's still business. Still business.